Good evening. My name is Brandon Monk, and it is Tuesday, June the 20th at around a little after 6 p.m., and I call this meeting to order. We have an agenda before us. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the closed session portion of the agenda to add students and to remove power lines through Redbud Run Elementary School and Millbrook High School. All right, we have a motion to amend the agenda. Second. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to amend, a, amend the agenda uh, as presented. Any discussion on the amendment? All right, all in favor of approving the amendment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, all right. Amendment passes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the County School Board of Frederick County, Virginia, enter a closed session meeting for the following, to review and discuss individual Oops, personnel sorry, matters. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I don't know that we um, approve the agenda itself, mm. sorry. Move to approve the agenda as amended, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Second. All right, motion is remain properly seconded to approve the agenda as amended. Apologies for that. Any discussion? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, now we have an agenda. Mr. Vice Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that the County School Board of Frederick County, Virginia, enter a closed session meeting for the following, to review and discuss individual personnel matters, including appointments, administrative appointments, resignations, administrative leave, dismissals, substitutes, the evaluation of the superintendent, and the terms of employment for individual senior executive staff pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.23711A1, and to review and discuss individual student matters that would involve specific students and particular information contained in their scholastic records, including violations of the Code of Conduct pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.23711A2. Second. All right, nice and simple. We have a motion and a second for the reasons that the vice chair uh, mentioned to move into closed session. Any discussion? All in favor of doing so, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we're in closed session. Should reconvene at approximately 7 p.m. I move that the board reconvene from closed session. We have a motion to reconvene. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to reconvene. Any discussion? All in favor of doing so signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We are reconvened. I move that to the best of each board member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act were discussed in the closed session and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed session was convened were heard, discussed, or considered by the school board. Second. The motion is made properly seconded. Madam Clerk. Mr. Lake. Yes. Ms. White. Yes. Mr. Atkins. Aye. Mr. Comstock. Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Mr. Monk? Yes. All right. We are certified. We have one action item coming out of closed session, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the personnel actions as recommended by the superintendent. All right. Motion has been made. Second. And properly seconded to approve the personnel actions as recommended by the superintendent. Any discussion? Saying none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Please join me in a moment of silence. All right. Thank you. Next on our agenda is a salute to our flag and the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next is the consent agenda. What is the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. Second. The motion's been made and properly seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Next, we have our student and staff recognition. I will turn it over to Dr. Hummer. All right. 
right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening and welcome to our Awards of Excellence program. Before we proceed, I would like to ask that everyone stay here through the entire program out of respect for each individual who is going to be recognized. Once we have completed all of the presentations, we will give you an opportunity to leave and enjoy the rest of your evening. Also, when you come forward for your certificate, please take a moment to pause with Mr. Monk and myself for a photograph. Then move to the right, remain at the front, and we will take a photo of the entire group being recognized. So Mr. Monk and I will head on down and we'll start reading off some names and some recognitions. Thanks everybody. The Sharando High School girls tennis team had an outstanding season. The team finished with a record of 21 wins and three losses. The team was this year's Northwestern District Champion, the Region C4 runner-up, and they completed their season as this year's state class four runners-up. Please join me in congratulating them for their accomplishments. Please come forward as your name is read. Morgan Sutphin. <laughs> Emmy Wooliver. Kate, oops, sorry. Katie Freelich. Leah Gannon. Kendall Clark. Addison Kelly. Madison Cowden. <laughs> Naya Patton. <laughs> Head coach Trevor Johnson. Assistant Coach Sarah Wolf. <laughs> and Assistant Coach Jason Robertson. Every year, we re recognize numerous staff with awards for going the extra mile for all of their hard work to support our students. The Gala Award recognizes the top maintenance or custodial staff at each school. The McIntosh Award recognizes instructional assistants, library aides, and bus aides at each school. The Rome Award recognizes the top nutrition staff member of the year. And the York Award recognizes specialists to include 
student support specialists, clerical support, information, technology staff, school psychologists, diagnosticians, social workers, sign language interpreters, accompanists, and school nurses. We also recognize a bus driver of the year and a teacher of the year. We are so proud of our nominees, finalists, and winners from each award category. We have great people that work here in Frederick County, and the least we can do is recognize them for going above and beyond for their day-to-day -day commitment to our students and community. We are first going to recognize the Teacher of the Year Award. We have Gwen Moyer. She was a finalist for the Teacher of the Year Award. Gwen is an ESL teacher at Evendale Elementary School. Prior to joining Evendale Elementary, she taught at NREP, Redbud, and Bass Hoover Elementary Schools. Gwen has dedicated a total of 18 years of service to Frederick County Public Schools. <laughs> Deborah Grumbacher is the winner of the Teacher of the Year Award. Deborah began her teaching career in Spotsylvania, Virginia, prior to joining Frederick County Public Schools in 2002 as a social studies teacher at James Wood High School. She has dedicated 21 years of service to Frederick County Public Schools. Finalist for the Teacher of the Year Award was also Christina Whitaker. She is a teacher at Sharando High School where she has taught agriculture for 27 years and she has also served as a department chair and FFA sponsor, but she could not be with us tonight. Moving on to the Gala Award, Kenny Snow was a finalist for the Gala Award and he is a maintenance technician three in facility services and has 25 years of service with Frederick County Public Schools. Rick Rivetta is the winner of the Gala Award. Rick is the head custodian at Gainsborough Elementary School where he has served for 15 years. Next, we have the McIntosh Award. The winner of the McIntosh Award is Nanette Fox, and Nanette joined Frederick County Public Schools as a substitute teacher and has worked as an instructional assistant at Middletown Elementary School for almost five years. Catherine Miller was a finalist for the McIntosh Award. She's a special instructional assistant at Frederick County Middle School, and she has five years of service with Frederick County Public Schools. She could not be with us tonight. For the Rome Award, unfortunately, we did not have anyone able to attend tonight for the Rome Award, but those winners, or the finalist was Robin Costello. Uh, she is a school nutrition manager at Jordan Springs Elementary School and has six years of service with Frederick County Public Schools. Prior to joining Jordan Springs Elementary School, she worked in school nutrition services at Orchard View Elementary. And the winner of the Rome Award was Robin Dick. Robin is a school nutrition manager at James Wood High School and has served Frederick County Public Schools for 19 years. She also used to be a school nutrition manager at Millbrook High School. Moving on to the York Award, Jennifer Lilly was a finalist for the York Award. Jennifer is an administrative assistant three at James Wood High School where she has worked for six years. Prior to this role, she dedicated three years to Frederick County Public Schools as a substitute teacher.
Charlotte Grandel is the winner of the York Award. Charlotte is a facilities services specialist for Frederick County Public Schools, and she has devoted her entire 19 years of service with Frederick County Public Schools to the facilities services department. The bus driver of the year is Marvette Coates. She was named bus driver of the year for this season. She has driven a Frederick County school bus for 25 years, drives bus 258, which serves students attending Bass Hoover Elementary School and Admiral Byrd Middle School. Next, we have the Virginia Board of Education 2023 Continuous Improvement Exemplar Award. The announcement of the Exemplar Performance Award provides the Virginia Board of Education the opportunity to recognize schools, school divisions, or school boards for excellence in their high achievement, continuous improvement, or innovative practices. We are pleased to congratulate Indian Hollow Elementary School for being selected to receive the 2022-23 Virginia Board of Education's Continuous Improvement Award. All right, next we have our administrative appointments and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Hummer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. I'm, a pleased, I'm pleased to announce several new administrative appointments this evening. As I call your name, please come up to the podium. First up is Jennifer Rowan, come on up please. She will be the new assistant principal at Frederick County Middle School, effective July 3rd. Dr. Rowan is, rejo is rejoining FCPS. She previously worked in our division as an English teacher at Millbrook High School, as well as an instructional technology coach, and has since served as the director of technology in Jefferson County, in Jefferson County, West Virginia. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rowan back to FCPS. to be here and I can't wait to get started at Frederick County Middle. Now Dr. Brown before you head on back do you have any family here you would like to introduce? I do not. Okay. They're all in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Welcome again. Thank you. All right next up is Eric Bear will be a new assistant principal at James Wood Middle School effective July 3rd 2023. Mr. Bear is also returning to FCPS. He is a James Wood High School graduate and former teacher at Greenwood Mill Elementary School. So welcome back. Mr. Bear is coming up, coming to us from Loudoun County Public Schools, where he is a middle school student uh, support lead teacher. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Bear back to FCPS. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be back in Frederick County Public Schools, and I'm super excited to be working at Jameswood Middle School. That's great. And any family here to introduce? No, my wife is putting our two-month-old to bed right oh, now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, welcome. All right, next up is Darius Fenton. He will be the new assistant principal at Sharando High School, and that will be the effective start date of July 3rd. Mr. Fenton has 11 years of experience as an assistant principal at Washington High School in Jefferson County, West Virginia, and a 14 years as a teacher. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Fenton to FCPS. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, good afternoon. 
I'm having some voice issues, but good afternoon. I'm, I'm pleased to be here with the Sharando uh, family. I have on my red and black. Um, to show you, I'm a true warrior now. Uh, I started in Fairfax County Public Schools, and I'm going to end up in Frederick County Public Schools as I retire. So thank you. I'm happy to be here, and I do have my wife, beautiful wife, Shannon. Uh, All right. Thinking. Welcome, Thanks, Shannon. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the family. Thank you. All right. Next up is Tim Conlin. Please come on down. He will be the Division Safety and Security Administrator, effective July 3rd. Mr. Conlin is coming to FCPS from Amazon, where he is employed as a security manager. Mr. Conlin is also a retired district field sergeant with the Chicago Police Department, where he dedicated 25 years of service. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Conlin to FCPS. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. I'm really looking forward to meeting everyone and getting started. All right. Any family? Uh, my wife is a nurse. She's still at the hospital, and okay. our, our kids are all at work. They're all in college. So. <laughs> all right. Welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Next up is Jared Euler. Come on down, please. He will be the coordinator of student activities for Millbrook High School, effective July 1. Mr. Euler has dedicated the past 12 years working with Millbrook students and staff as a teacher and coach, and he is a proud Millbrook graduate. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Euler to his new role. Welcome, sir. I have, a, I have a pretty interesting story. I remember Millbrook was a trailer that used to sit back here, so I kind of started at the beginning of it. Uh, I've been teaching there forever. It's been a dream of mine to be able to do this, and I'm really excited. Uh, as Ms. Altendorf says, I bleed blue, um, so I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. And I have my wife here. we got a babysitter tonight. My wife, Kate's with uh, me tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. All right, we have two more, Mr. Chair. Um, next up is Ryan Lingle. He will be the Supervisor of Elementary Instructional Services, effective July 6th. Mr. Lingle has 10 years of experience as a school administrator, in addition to eight years of experience as an elementary teacher and an instructional coach in Shen Shenandoah County Public Schools. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Lingle to FCPS. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hummer, Chairman Monk, members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to working alongside you and um, looking forward to getting started this year. Great. Any family here? Uh, no, not here. They're okay. watching from home. My six-year-old right. daughter, Hadley, and, and wife, Brandy, are watching from home. Great. Great. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Last but not least is Alice Allison Levine, who will be the Supervisor of Secondary Instructional Services beginning in July of 2023. Ms. Levine currently serves as a science teacher at Millbrook High School, where she has taught for four years and has a total of 10 years of experience in teaching. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Levine in her new role. Welcome. Thank you for this opportunity, and I'm really looking forward to working with science and art teachers in the division. I, my, I have two little ones. They're both at home with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> very smart. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Hummer. I know we are excited uh, during this season of, uh, of newness for each of you. I think seven I counted, so good for us and excited to have you uh, with each of your talents that you bring and, and some of you returning here. So welcome back or welcome to Frederick County Public Schools and excited to get you connected with our students and community at large and, and thank you for committing to, uh, to serving them. All right, so appreciate those who participated in our student and staff recognition. And so now would be the time if you would like to, uh, to make your exit, you're welcome to do so. <laughs> and we'll give you a few moments. <laughs> Thank you. 
Congratulations. Thank you very All right. Thank you and appreciate it. The next item on our agenda would be citizen and staff comments. And we do have a few folks that have signed up. First speaker we have is Sonia Marfadia Good. If you come forward, state your name, and let me your comments to three minutes or less, please. Good evening. My name is Sonia Marfati Agud, and I live in Back Creek. I am here to express my deep concern regarding the recent DUI charge against Shawnee School Board member Miles Atkins. As a concerned member of the community, I strongly believe that, is in, that it is in the best interest of our school district and its stakeholders for Mr. Atkins to resign from the school board. The role of a school board member is one of great responsibility and trust. It demands the highest standards of conduct and moral character. Unfortunately, the multiple charges against Mr. Atkins raises serious doubts about his ability to fulfill his duties effectively and serve as a positive role model for our students. Driving under the influence not only endangers the life of the driver, but also poses a significant risk to the safety and well-being of other individuals on the road, including innocent pedestrians and fellow motorists. Such reckless behavior reflects a lapse in judgment and demonstrates a disregard for the safety of our community members. Given the seriousness of this charge and the potential impact on Mr. Adkins' ability to perform his responsibilities, I urge you, as the governing body of our school district, to take this matter seriously. It is imperative that you consider the best interests of our students, parents, and the wider community in making decisions that maintain the integrity and reputation of our school board. I understand that Mr. Adkins is entitled to due process, and I respect the legal proceedings that will follow. However, in order to uphold the public's trust in the school board and to maintain the high standards of ethical conduct expected from our elected officials, I believe that resignation is the appropriate course of action. Mr. Monk, when you were voted chairman again, even though you were running for state senate, you stated that your campaign efforts would not interfere with your duties as chairman to the school board. However, your comments posted on social media referring to this incident as noise and your comments to the Winchester Star stating that we should reach out to Mr. Adkins directly if we have an issue with his conduct proves that you are not doing your job. Your actions do nothing, to do nothing says everything. I kindly request that you address this issue with utmost urgency and transparency, providing a clear and decisive response to this matter. Our community deserves leaders who embody the values we seek to instill in our students, leaders who can serve as beacons of integrity, responsibility, and accountability. Thank you for your attention to this matter. I trust that you will carefully consider the concerns expressed by numerous community members who share these sentiments. I look forward to a prompt and appropriate resolution to this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Karen Dredsky. You come forward, say your name, Magisterial District, and let me your comments of three minutes or less, please. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Karen Dredsky. I'm from the Gainsborough District. Um, Mr. Monk, fellow members, Dr. Hummer. Um, I decided to come up kind of at the last minute tonight um, because I've, I realized with the end of the school year that, Dr. Hummer, you're new, so you didn't hear a suggestion I had made last year. And unfortunately, it's a little too late for this year. But I want to make it again in hopes that maybe you'll consider it for the end of the year next year. And uh, it's been uh, a little over four decades since I was in high school. <laughs> However, one of the things that I've noticed um, throughout my son's high school career is that when you have something that isn't so great that happens, it seems to, as a parent, you kind of get focused on that, and, you real, and you're very focused on the negativity and not the positivity. And we have so many amazing faculty and staff, as was just exemplified here with all of the wonderful awards and everything that were given out. Um, and the only way to get rid of those people or to deal with people and reprimand them or whatever, the ones that are the problem children, is you have to know about it. And in the general work world outside of education, at least, I know that normally there's some kind of a feedback loop. When I was in high school, oh, so long ago, <laughs> we had a feedback loop. On our last day of classes, we would, in high school, the teacher brought in a stack of survey papers. 
and an envelope, a manila envelope, and 15 minutes before the class was over, passed them all out to all of the students, said thank you for the year, said their goodbye, walked out. The students were then allowed to fill out the survey on how they felt about their class, about their teacher, um, were able to anonymously give feedback on anything that they had issues with or that they loved about their class and their teacher. It was then collected by a student volunteer who sealed the envelope after collecting all of the surveys and then it was given back to administration. Now, I feel like we certainly could say, oh, we can do it electronically, but our students are smart enough to know that that can be tracked to see whose who's Chromebook it came from. Um, so they're not gonna still feel like they are free to say what they feel or what they've experienced. And I think that I would really love to see that happen. I know it didn't happen. I know there was a senior survey that went out, but it wasn't the same as asking each one of the grades at the high school how they felt and to get feedback. Um, because I think that there are some folks who, like we have in the regular work world that I work in, that whenever the boss is around, man, they put on a great show. But what they do when the boss isn't around, yeah, how do you prove it? It's always my word against yours unless they hear from other, other people who work with them. And sometimes people don't want to make waves, but they're miserable because of it. And I would like to see that implemented next year or some version of that. And I'd like you to take that into serious consideration. And thank you for everything you're doing so far. We really appreciate you, Dr. Hummer. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jody Yegi. Hi, my name is Jody Yegi, and I'm a member of the Redbud District. I'm also a mom raising three teenagers. Teenagers who are impressionable, along with the other 14,000 students in our district. Um, we expect our leaders to exhibit behaviors that we want our students to look up to, my kids included. It's an ex expectation of our teachers and our staff. It's an expectation of our administration. I would certainly think that that same expectation should hold true for our school board members. Since Mr. Monk won't make a public statement condemning the behaviors we're seeing from a certain member of the school board, I will. Mr. Atkins, we're all akin to making mistakes in our lives. You said it yourself when you were running for, re for election um, that following your 2014 hit and run and DUI that you had changed a lot and that you participated in a driver's re-education program, began attending church services again, and got involved in charity work to straighten things out and that it's really worked for you. You were given grace and elected to this role. Yet, since being elected, we continue to hear of things that don't show me that things have really changed. Following your election, we heard public apologies for reposting offensive social media posts of your fellow school board members. Then, in April of 2022, you were charged with public intox in Prince William County. And then again, most recently, another DUI in Loudoun County. Mr. Adkins, these are no longer mistakes. This is repeatable behavior. On March 3rd, 2022, you had stated that you do not adhere to the code of conduct the school board put into place, that you adhere to the wishes of your constituents. Mr. Adkins, as a constituent of Frederick County, my wish is that you step down from your role on the school board, get some professional help, and quit being a display for our students who are so impressionable at this stage in their lives. The people of Shawnee District deserve more, and more importantly, our children deserve more in our leaders. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike Kidwell. Thank you. I am Mike Kidwell. I'm a resident of Lake Frederick, and tonight I speak on behalf of the Lake Frederick Democrats and Independents group. I'm here in support of what you've already heard twice, an effort to encourage you to do the right thing, Mr. Atkins, and resign from the Frederick County, Virginia School Board. It is beyond reason that I should have to be here tonight, especially on such a special night with the awards, and I can assure you that it gives me zero pleasure to be here to do this. We do not wish to publicly embarrass or ridicule you. So please understand that you leave us no choice but to demand that you resign. 
The Winchester Star, as you know, reports uh, some of the things that have happened to you. They've been outlined already. Here we are again to talk to you and about you. You have also confirmed that you were even in the Capitol building at the insurrection. Okay, the sum of all these events, again, as has already been outlined, is unacceptable. And it cannot be tolerated by the citizens and it should not be tolerated by this board. And that's true of any of the representatives of the school board. They make very important decisions about the most precious of our citizens, the children. Please, Mr. Atkins, do the right thing and resign. I have one more group I'd like to speak to. And that basically is the board itself. Mr. Monk, the other members of the board, we are disappointed here in your leadership of this board in these instances that we're talking about. You must ensure that our county is not put in the position of having to defend behaviors which are undefendable. You have to make sure that Frederick County doesn't endure the notoriety of newspaper articles outlining this type of conduct and behavior. Your position on his conduct, yours, Mr. Atkins, must be made clear by you all. You have to say something. Otherwise, I think, and we think, you shirk your responsibilities to the citizens of the county. And you fail, in your example, to all the students of this county. Please, Mr. Monk and members of the board, I think you must do the right, right thing also and publicly ask Mr. Atkins for his resignation. Thank you. Those were the individuals that signed up to speak. Is there any short? Come, come forward if you could state your name, magisterial district, and limit your comments to three minutes or less, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Daryl Bell, and I'm from the Opekin district. Um, I'd like to end things on a positive note, actually. Um, the award ceremony was absolutely wonderful, and it's great to see that these fine individuals are being recognized for their hard work. But there's a group of people that I think um, have been missed in these awards. Um, I've seen uh, similar awards given in other counties and other states, um, and I promise this is not self-serving. I'm a full-time teacher now. <laughs> but <laughs> substitute teachers should be recognized. Um, substitute teachers are hard to find for many of the school districts, as I'm sure Dr. Hummer is well aware and many of you are also well aware. I served as a long-term substitute at Robert E. Eller Middle School this year in English. And I started in September and I ended in June. So I might as well have been the full-time teacher, but I wasn't and that's okay. And I'm not saying I deserved an award, but what I'm saying is there's a group of us who dedicate ourselves to come out to the schools. And you have to understand we have a much more challenging job than the regular teacher because the students don't know us. Now, for me, it became much easier because I was there for the entire year. But if you get a substitute teacher that comes out and is in one class one day, another class another day, another school the, ne the next day, the students don't really get to know that person, but they still dedicate their time and their service to the students. So I would just urge you to think about offering some sort of an award for substitute teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is the reports. Superintendent of the Schools, Dr. Hummer. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a, a couple items that I wanna mention and then I will step on down and provide you all with my summary of my entry plan, which I'm very excited to present to you all. So I do have a couple things that I wanted to continue to um, provide some recognition of some accolades throughout <coughs> our school division. So um, first is congratulations to all of our sports teams um, this year that have progressed throughout the playoffs this season. 
uh, in addition to the Sharando High School tennis team, girls tennis team who made it to the state championship finals. Uh, three James Wood High School teams also had an outstanding season. The girls' soccer team made it to the state quarter fi quarterfinals. The softball team made it to the quarterfinals. And the baseball team made it to the semifinals. So close. Um, I'm so proud of each of these teams. I'm so, so proud of their coaching staff and all of their parents and friends and relatives who were there to support them. And I'm looking forward to seeing what will, they will accomplish next season, as well as all of our other sports teams. So I'm very proud of each and every one of them. Next up is I, I'm also extremely proud of all of our graduates. I was very, very impressed with all three of our high school graduations. I was prepared for that, and it was just absolutely outstanding to be a part of, of that celebration. Um, we should also all take a moment to really appreciate all of our student successes um, who have graduated from going into a trade or, or going into the workforce or the military or those going to a college or a university. Regardless, we are very lucky to have a such great student body here in Frederick County, and I'm looking forward to what they can accomplish in the next chapter of their lives. So very, very impressed to hear all of their accomplishments. I also want to recognize our administrators and, and staff for putting together such a phenomenal graduation in all three of our high schools. It is a lot of work that goes into that. And I also want to include our media crew. Um, they, they do a lot of work on making sure that each of those events go off without a hitch. Um, they're actually behind the scenes right now making sure that my microphone works, that you can hear my robust voice. Um, and I'm just uh, very, very proud of, of all of, of the work that they do. And, and thank you to everybody who worked tirelessly um, to making sure that our community has the best access to what we have going on in our school division. So just wanted to provide that, that accolade there. So Thank with you. that, Mr. Chair, I'm going to head on down and set up my presentation. So Thank you, Dr. You. Hummer. I appreciate that. I think that's good. <laughs> All right. Good evening, Mr. Chair, school board, community. I am very excited to present to you all my summary for my entry plan. There was a lot of work that went into this. There is a lot of work that is going to result from this, and I want to provide to you all my findings. I am going to provide to you with a brief summary of my entry plan that I presented to you in February, which is hard to believe that we're already in June, and it's going coming up here on five months for me here on June 30th, which has been a probably the best five months of my entire career. And I'm not just saying that I promise. Um, this has just been a, a phenomenal experience. And, and as I shared with you all, I'm very thankful for this opportunity and looking forward to what else I can help do to, per, to uh, continue to uh, move our school division forward. So as I, as I mentioned, I want to provide you all with a just quick refresher of where I started in regards to what drove this entry plan. And I want to start with the superintendent's role, which is very, very important that I am always reminding you all of my role and that you all are also holding me accountable for my role, which is very, very important. And first is making sure that I create a safe learning environment and a safe culture for all of our staff and students. Secondly, is making sure that I am consistently and uh, working with all of the stakeholders, not only in our school division, but in our community, because they are what's going to help move our school division forward as we travel on this journey together. Next is making sure that we are always seeking feedback from all constituents of our school division and community, which is I'm going to continue with my start, stop, and continue conversations with all representatives to continue to move us forward. And then, of course, first and foremost, of making sure that I'm implementing your will and that I'm continuously implementing our strategic plan, which you voted on in 20. Inspire 2025, and we are coming very close of creating Inspire 2030, which I'm looking forward to um, being on that journey with you as, as well. So I still get a lot of flack for being a Giants fan. I know from, from being from New Jersey, I, I've always rooted for the Giants, but that is not why I put this picture up here. I put this picture up here because we are a team. As a community, I see the boards laughing other at me. Teams. So. I'm just <laughs> chiming in, sorry. Just imagine your football team, okay? <laughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Lake. I appreciate you're, you're that. You're doing great. You're, you're doing great till this Oh, slide. I'm just yeah. declining, huh? Man, I got to find another team to put up there. Well, um, and the reason I put this up here is to provide an analogy that we are all going to huddle up and talk about what we need to do. We all have an assignment, and then when we break that huddle, we all are working towards that common goal and vision, which is to do what's best for all students. And I shared with you from day one that I am going to make mistakes. We are going to make mistakes. You are going to make mistakes. My staff is going to make mistakes. But we are going to huddle back up, and we are going to continue to move forward. And we're going to talk about what that next play is, and we're going to talk about what we can do to move forward and learn in regards to what we need to do what's best for all students. And I'm going to continue with that mentality throughout my entire, excuse me, my entire tenure here in Frederick County. So what drove this entry plan First, I want to start with my values, and my family is very, very important to me, and we are officially here in Frederick County, which I'm very happy for. My family is very happy. Even when I'm getting home at night at 10, 1030, they're waiting there for me, and it's just such a great feeling. Um, so I absolutely love my family, and that really drives me with who I am and, and what I'm all about, and also my values, which is beyond just what you see here as what I do in regards to servicing our students and our community. This is what I live by, and that's self-efficacy, knowing that we can do the job. Integrity, making sure that no matter what we're doing, no matter if somebody's watching or not, that we're always making sure that we're putting forward our best selves and we're doing the best we can to make others around us better. Resilience, as I shared with you earlier, we're going to hit some roadblocks. We're going to hit obstacles. It is going to happen, but we have to keep moving forward and we have to keep pushing ourselves and learning from that. And lastly is empathy. That is very, very important as part of my listening tour to make sure that I'm not only listening, but I'm also understanding and putting myself in other shoes in regards to what we have going on in our school division and what is moving us forward or what is hindering um, us from moving forward. Very important. Lastly is our guiding principles, and this is what guided me in regards to as I was listening to those, to, to the constituents, as I was putting together the plan, which I will be showing you here in a second, of my guiding principles, which first and foremost is all children, all children have the ability to be successful, and they all deserve an opportunity to have those um, experiences that all students deserve. So that is number one. Next is every constituent and representative from our community is going to be part of this journey with us. Also want to make sure that all of our actions, all of my actions, are part of a collaborative and transparent process. And as I mentioned to you earlier, listening and hearing from others is also very important. So I want to make sure that every decision that is made is done with listening and understanding, and it is done in the best interest of all of our students. So here's a quick overview of the last 100 days. Uh, I did meet with previous constituents and current constituents in regards to what we have going on here in Frederick County. I was able to listen and evaluate current processes, and then I have a plan. Keep in mind before I move forward here that this is continuous. And I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but this isn't something that I'm going to be done here. I'm going to put this mouse down and say, all right, now we're moving on to something else. This is something that is going to drive our progress. It's going to drive our successes, and it's going to drive you holding me accountable for what we need to do as a school division. And we are going to be continuously doing things that are going to be associated with what I found and the direction that we need to go in as a school division. So what have I done over the last 100 days? So the best part about this is please keep in mind, this might look like a lot. This was in addition to everything else that a superintendent has to do. So these first 100 days have been exhilarating. Uh, they've been uh, challenging. They've been fun. It's been a learning experience. But there has been a lot of opportunities for me, me to engage with the community, for me to engage with my staff, to make sure that we are reaching all constituents of our community through online surveys. I've met one-on-one -on -one with families. I've met one-on-one -on -one with parents. I've met one-on-one -on -one with teachers and representatives in our school division. And I also, we also had a school board retreat where I was able to learn more uh, about what you all, what your goals were and how we can make sure that we learn and, and grow together. Mr. Comstock, I'm sorry you have a face. Is everything okay? Yep. You sure? Okay. I want to make sure if there's yep. anything that you wanted to clarify in here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and making sure that we're also meeting with all parents uh, and, and making sure that we're meeting with other constituents of, of our community. So what we learned. The first two pieces are very, very important. 
because we have a lot of tradition here in Frederick County from our staff to representatives in our community. And every single person that I met with truly cares about kids. I didn't meet one person that said, I don't want what's best for all kids. And that's from community stakeholders to our school system, which is great. And that's a lot to build off of. That doesn't mean that we do not have things that we need to work on. So some of the things that I found, and keep in mind, this is just a summary. There was a lot of information that I gathered throughout my list listening tours, throughout my online survey requests, throughout my individual meetings. And the biggest theme that I saw is that we need to be intentional. We need to be intentional with our communication. We need to be intentional with how we allocate resources to where there's need areas throughout our school division. We need to be intentional with communication and making sure that we have a plan that everybody understands in regards to how information gets out to all of our families, to all of our staff, to all of you, to make sure that we're all on the same page in regards to what we're doing as a school division and the areas that we need to improve. And we also need to make sure that we have structures and procedures, standard operating procedures that we are able to follow. So that's very crystal clear for all of us to understand with every aspect of our school division so we can focus more on procedures and practices rather than each individual situation because those practices will drive us in regards to moving forward and getting better in each aspect of our school division. The next phase of my entry plan was to evaluate, and that is to evaluate current practices, evaluating our policies, evalu evaluating what current standard operating procedures that we currently have in place, as well as taking a look at our Inspire 2025 plan and how we are allocating resources, how we're measuring that, as well as the structures in each of our departments. And what I found there, again, this is just a summary, is that we have some work to do in regards to aligning our goals with how we are allocating our resources, making sure that we're looking at the areas that we need to see improvement and that we are appropriately allocating resources to each of those areas. Not saying that we weren't doing that, we just need to do better with that. Um, we also need to make sure that we are uh, encouraging our staff to come forward in regards to feedback and input because that is how we're gonna have to get better. We have to create that culture that if something is not right, you have to speak up. There is no retaliation. There is no treating you differently. There's no not including you in a specific group. It's we need to make sure that we establish that culture of constructive feedback because, again, that is what's going to help move us forward and accelerate ourselves. The next piece, which I'm very excited about, is we need to create a more structured communication plan. We need to be more intentional. There was a lot of situations and instances as I was looking at current plans and practices and procedures and talking to constituents that there was a lot of, well, we did that? How did we measure it and how did we determine if it was effective? So it's turning around and looking, looking at the practices and procedures we have in place and how do we know if we are being effective with rolling these things out, which the biggest way to do that is communication. So we are going to put together a very structured communication plan for everybody to follow and understand to make sure that from our schools all the way up to central office, we are communicating in an effective manner. Very, very important. So here are some things that I am recommending that we do moving forward. And as I mentioned, this is a continuous process. This is not something that just ends as I walk off the stage here. This is something that I expect you all to hold me accountable for. And it is something that I will continue to talk with our staff, talk with our constituents, talk with our schools to make sure that we are doing everything that we need to do in order to move us forward. So a couple things that we need to do, again, is being intentional about our communication plan, making sure that everybody understands how we're communicating, how we interact with each other and how we get information out to our community, how we get information to you, and how we get information to our staff. Very, very important. We also have to make sure that we are, are aligning our goals with our resources, that we're aligning our structures with our strategic plan goals, and making sure that we are continuously assessing those goals so that, we again, we are holding ourselves accountable. What are the expectations? And then we can start holding ourselves and folks accountable for the progress of, of our students. Making sure that we have a good organizational structure. I think there is some room for improvement there from central office to our buildings in regards to how we're staffing. And that's something that I've mentioned to each of you as well as in a public forum that we need a more structured staffing standard to make sure that we know how we're allocating resources and positions. And that's something that I'm looking forward to presenting to you in this next budget cycle. 
The other piece is, and I've got a lot, I've received a lot of feedback from our schools, we received a lot of feedback from our staff, is I'm creating what's called an ambassador program. And what this ambassador program is, is that everybody in central office will be assigned a building. And they will be responsible for working directly with that building on going to, for, for start of the school year, back to school nights, or just coming in and help supporting for things going on, or if there's need for a sub, or whatever it is, everybody in central office, including myself, will be assigned to school, and they will work directly with that school for a determined amount of time. I believe that will help bridge that relationship with, with central office and our schools, and also bridge those supports, and making sure that everybody is on the same page with why we do what we do, and it's we do what we do for the schools. And that is why we're here every day. So looking forward to, to rolling that piece out, as well as making sure that we are utilizing this information for building our Inspire 2030, which I say that right now, it could be called something else, but that is something that we are gonna be looking at very shortly. So lastly, uh, I just wanted to again reiterate what I mentioned earlier of what I will be continuously doing. Online survey will stay open. That's still currently on the website where you can put in information as a constituent or a staff member. And I am getting consistent feedback on that, on that survey to make sure that we're addressing needs as they come up throughout the year. Uh, we're gonna be putting together more advisory groups, more intentional advisory groups for specific areas of our school division so that we are bringing on more staff, more, more excuse me, more constituents and parents so that we're involving them in processes as they come up. We will be having town halls as well as we're gonna be assigned monthly talks with the superintendent. That's what we're calling it right now, but you will just be inviting constituents. I'll be traveling throughout the, the school division and giving folks an opportunity to chat with me and talk about things that are happening throughout the school division. Making sure that we are building out our budget, capital improvement, and capital assessment planning, aligning with those areas that I just mentioned to you all, and I believe that we are making progress with that, and I'm looking forward to continuing, making sure that we're doing our organizational planning and involving all stakeholders. So lastly, I do, I do want to acknowledge these students up here. So we had a celebration for our Bright Futures program, and these students came up to me, and they're like, are you the superintendent? I'm like, yeah, like, we want to take a picture with you. So they have been here their entire career. They graduated, and every year they have contributed to Bright Futures. So that's a Bright Future certificate. So I was just very impressed, very proud of them. Each of them are going on to college, but just that, that nature of giving service and giving back, I was very proud of these young ladies. So um, any questions that you have, I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you for this opportunity, and I'm looking forward to uh, spending hopefully the next couple of years with you all as we work through this, maybe more. Thank you, Dr. Hummer. Thank I you. remember uh, <clears throat> us chatting about the first 100 days as a board collectively uh, at the beginning of that process, and so it's exciting to see this entry plan and, and what things look like and um, some of the plans and vision uh, for making a great school system even better. Board members, thoughts or feedback for Dr. Hummer? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Atkins. I appreciate uh, what you've done with this 100-day plan, and I, I really appreciate the uh, data-driven information that you're bringing to us so we can make uh, better informed decisions, so thank you. All thank right. you, Mr. Atkins. Ms. Oh, Martin. Martin. I really, really like the ambassador thing. Thank you. Yes. All right. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> concur, concur. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hart. Right, appreciate you, it. All right. Next on our agenda is unfinished business, and this would be the first reading of policy 116P, bylaws, board, min, board minutes, recording votes, and tie votes. And so um, I'll share some context, and Dr. Hummer, please feel free to elaborate. But I know in a previous board meeting, we had some conversation around um, this bylaw, and it was discussed that we would um, revisit it and look for adjustments on that. And so um, this is an adjustment that uh, I've recommended and, and staff has worked on, and so want the board to consider it. Um, right now it's first reading, because it's a bylaw, we would need to vote on it at the next meeting if we were to do so. Um, so <coughs> any feedback or comments as part of this first reading? Bless you. <laughs> a great comment. I read it, I, I went through it uh, extensively, and uh, I think it reflects just what we want. So I look forward to uh, your next meeting and making it making it real. Agree. Thank you, Mr. Lake. All right, we will consider that read. Uh, new new business, and we um, have a great 
deal of new business to get to, and so let's get to it. First item is the committee report of the instruction committee meeting, which was held on May the 25th. All right, so a meeting of the instruction committee of Frederick County School Board was held in the Dr. Melton F. Wright Board Meeting Room at the Frederick County Public Schools Administrating Bu Administrative Building on May 25th, 2023. The meeting was called to order at 4.33 p.m. and a copy of the minutes have been provided to each board member. During the meeting, Mr. Hester shared with Ms. that Ms. White would be joining at the meeting remotely due to a personal matter, specifically because she was attending her niece's graduation in Gatesville, Texas. Ms. Echevera reviewed the CTE textbook and supplemental materials being presented for consideration to the committee. The textbook presented to the committee for consideration is Natural Resource Systems, and the supplemental material presented for consideration to the committee is How to Adult. Ms. Echever Ms. Echeveria stated that the textbook supplemental material were reviewed by stakeholders and included a time frame for public comment. Ms. Rittenhauer reviewed the Title I Part D plan and estimated Title I Part D grant in the amount of $60,552.81. Ms. Unhock reviewed policy 437P, Students Administration of Medication to Students, specifically adding information about the administration of naloxone to students. It was requested to add the terminology of intranasal to the proposed next to the proposed text being modified in the policy. The instruction committee meeting adjourned at 4.53 p.m. Additional details regarding the committee meeting are included in the meeting minutes provided to board members. Do board members have any questions about what was covered in the instruction committee meeting held on May 25th? All right. Okay. We do have five action items coming out of this meeting. Um, first action item is recommend the adoption of the textbook Natural Resources Systems for the high schools. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to adopt the textbook Natural Resources Systems for the high schools. Any discussion? Um, this was an excellent resource. I took the time to obtain the book by myself and read through it, and it was it's very well chosen, and it has great information in it. Thank you. All right, seeing no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of uh, adopting the textbook, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The second recommendation is to adopt the supplemental material of how to adult for James Wood High School. Second. Motion is made properly seconded to adopt the supplemental material how to adult for James Wood High School. Any discussion? Again, this was an excellent, this one especially was an excellent resource. Um, read through it and it was very comprehensive, very easy to read and understand for <clears throat> young adults and it provides them with the tools they need to be successful financially and how to adult. So it was very well chosen and I appreciate the recommendation for us. All right. Seeing no further discussion, we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, <clears throat> motion carries. Third recommendation, approval of the Title I Part D application. Second. Motion is made properly seconded to approve the Title I Part D application. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Fourth recommendation for the board to adopt the changes to policy 437P, students, administration of medication to students. Second. Motion has been made properly seconded to adopt uh, changes to policy 437P, students administration and medication to students, which is in the board packet. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Final recommendation for approval of the minutes from the instruction committee meeting held on May 25th, 2023. Second. Motion has been made properly second to approve the minutes of the instruction committee meeting held May 25th, 2023. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Next item is the instruction committee meeting held on June 14th. All right. A meeting, of the, a meeting of the Instruction Committee of the Frederick County School Board was held at the Frederick County Public Schools Administration Building on June 14th, 2023. The meeting was called to order at 5.02 p.m., and a copy of the minutes had been provided to each board member. During the meeting, Ms. Hengardner reviewed Title I Part A application. She shared that Title I Part A of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act provides financial assistance to local school districts for children from low-income families to help ensure all children meet challenging state academic standards. 
She also shared the goals and objectives. <clears throat> the overall allocation for the 2023-24 school year is $1,762,594. Ms. Hingarter also reviewed Title II Part A application and its purpose to support student achievement through professional learning. Title IV funds will be transferred to Title II funds. The current allocation for the 2023-24 school year through Title II Part A is $354,022.35, and Title IV Part A is $136,816.22 transferred into Title II for a total of $490,830. $490,838.57. Goals and objectives were also discussed. Timber Ridge School and the Mountain View Christian Academy will be participating in Title I Part A grant. Dr. Greathout reviews Title III Part A application. Title III Part A application supports English learners' achievement under the Virginia's Accountability Plan provisions. This grant application was written based on the 2022-23 application. Goals and objectives were also reviewed. The total estimated allocation based on the 2022-23 is $100,606.14. The meeting adjourned at 5.26 p.m. Additional details regarding the committee meeting are included in the mid mid minutes provided to board members. Do board members have any questions about what was covered in the instruction <coughs> midi committee meeting held on June 14th? Okay. okay. Um, there's also five um, recommend approvals out of this meeting. Um, number one, recommend approval for the Title I Part A application. Second. All right, motion has been made and properly seconded to uh, approve the Title I Part A application, and we'll do a roll call vote on this. Just a moment. Are you all ready? Mr. Lake? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Comstock? Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Mr. Monk? Yes. All right, motion carries. Second, recommend approval of the Title II Part A application. Second. Motion is made properly seconded to approve Title II Part A application. Any discussion? We'll proceed to a roll call vote as well. Mr. Lake's request a roll call vote. Okay. Mr. Lake? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Comstock? Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. And Mr. Monk? Yes. All right, motion carries. Third, recommend approval of Title IV Part A application. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve as the committee chair recommends. Proceed to a vote. Mr. Lake? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Comstock? Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Mr. Monk? Yes. Motion carries. Four, recommend approval of the Title III Part A application. Second. All right. Motion is made properly second to recommend approval of the Title III Part A ac application. All in favor of approving. All right. Mr. Lake? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Comstock? Yes. Mr. Hester? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. And Mr. Monk? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Final recommendation of approval of the minutes from the instruction committee meeting held on June 14, 2023. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the minutes of the instruction committee meeting held on June 14, 2023. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. All right, next item is the personnel committee meeting held on June 6th. Yes. Um, our personnel committee meeting was held June 6, uh, called to order at 4.30 p.m. A uh, copy of the minutes are with each board member. Uh, Ms. Frakely uh, reviewed the FY24 staffing update to include vacancies. Uh, I'll point out that, um, as uh, she did, that was a snapshot in time. It probably changed 10 minutes after we talked about it. So uh, it was information only, but it was a process, and uh, when we... Um, uh, 
obviously need to be paying attention to. Anyway, uh, Mrs. Campbell uh, reviewed the, pro pro the progress in the hiring process. Mrs. Frankly also reviewed the status of support vacancies. Mrs. Swagger reviewed the redistribution of positions and Dr. William Sandy uh, reviewed the redistribution of special instructional services positions. It was also shared that Dal J. Howard Learning Center will host the Parent Resource Center and the Child Find Center. Ms. Frakely reviewed employee separation information and Mrs. Campbell shared the schedule for which the information is reviewed. We uh, adjourned the meeting at 4.15, uh, at five, read it Mike, at 5.14 p.m. <laughs> Uh, additional details uh, regarding what was covered at the meeting were included in the information provided all school board members. Are there any questions from board members? Okay. Good. Uh, the only action that we have is to recommend the approval of the minutes from the personnel committee meeting held on June 6, 2023. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the minutes from the personnel committee meeting held on June 6, 2023. Mr. Um, Chairman. Mr. Vice Chair. I do notice a typo in the spelling of Dr. William Sandy's uh, name. Thanks. All right. So. On the second page, second paragraph. Will the uh, motion and seconder approve the second. grammatical changes? Mr. Lake, the committee is okay with the grammatical changes? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Perfect. And spelling error, whatever else uh, whatever needs is. to be fixed. All right. All in favor, seen by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the Building and Grounds Committee meeting held on June the 7th. The Buildings and Grounds Committee met at the Frederick County Public Schools Administration Building on June 7th. The meeting was called to order at 4.30 p.m. and a copy of the minutes has been provided to each board member. During the meeting, Mr. Crispin reviewed the status of the capital projects list, the status of the modulars at Armel Elementary School, Jordan Springs Elementary School, and Sharando High School, and the start date of the Millbrook High School roofing project. Mr. Lee and Mr. Gross provided the status of the word wall at James Wood High School that is part of the addition and renovation project. Mr. Lee reviewed the information about the emergency communications tower to be located at Gainesboro Elementary School. Mr. Kenny discussed the additional asbestos found at James Wood High School in the abatement process. Mr. Lee reviewed the request from Rappahannock Electric requesting a right of way across the Route 7 frontage of Millbrook High School and Redbud Run Elementary School for a new transmission line. Mrs. Camry reviewed the recommendation of a contract award for petroleum products to H.N. Funkhauser & Sons in the estimated dollar value of $1,823,881.02. Mrs. Camry shared this fuel is used for heating oil, diesel, and unleaded, and fuel is sold at cost to Frederick County government. H.N. and Funkhaus Funkhauser and Sons was the only vendor to bid on this award. The meeting adjourned at 5.20 p.m. Additional details regarding the committee meeting are included in the minutes provided to board members. Do board members have any questions about what was covered at the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting held on June 7th? All right. Hearing none, I do have a note. Um, there was discussion about the Rappahannock Electric um, co-op requesting the right-of-way across from Route 7 uh, on, the, on that front end of Millbrook High School and Redwood Run Elementary School, and that that would be discussed at a future meeting due to delays from Rappahannock Electric co-op. Dr. Hummer, would you mind elaborating on that for us? Uh, yes, Mr. Comstock. So we had planned on that coming to you all in closed session because there is some compensation they would like to discuss with that proposal for you all to take into consideration. And then it was going to come to our open meeting in regards to your approval to allow them to do this, this work here. Uh, as we were working on them and preparing for this meeting, there were some additional things that they needed to look into. Uh, the agreement, there were some things that they wanted to look over. Uh, our attorneys did look over that agreement and they made some recommendations. And then in regards to the plan, so Mr. Comstock, if you recollect, you had some questions in regards to some roads and easements and such, and apparently those were not accurate in regards to the plans they were sharing with us, so that's some of the things they're working on. And we will have this proposed at a future meeting. So um, unfortunately, we're not able to get it together for this particular meeting. So I'll keep you all posted in regards to the next meeting. Thank you, Dr. Armour. We do have two action items coming out of committee, Mr. Chairman. I move to the, uh, recommend the full board award a contract valued at $1,823,881.02 
to H. N. Funkhauser and Son for petroleum products. Second. The motion has been made and properly seconded to award a contract valued at one million eight hundred twenty-three thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars and two cents to H. N. Funkhauser and Son for petroleum products. Any discussion? Seeing no one proceed to vote, all in favor signify by saying. Mr. Chairman. Oh, let's do a roll call vote, Mr. Lake. You're yeah. exactly right. <laughs> yes. Mr. Lake. Yes. Mrs. White. Yes. Mr. Atkins. Yes. Mr. Comstock. Yes. Mr. Hester. Yes. Ms. Martin. Yes. And Mr. Monk. Yes. All right. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Recommend approval of the minutes from the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting held on June 7th, 2023. Uh, Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the minutes from the Building and Grounds Committee meeting held on June 7th, 2023. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item on our agenda was the student report or the committee report from the student conduct and support committee meeting held on June 20th. Mr. Lake, you have anything um, to share? Yes, I'll go through this. Um, we did have a meeting, so I will report. Uh, the student conduct and support committee met at Frederick County Public Schools admin office this morning at eight o'clock. Uh, called to order at 8.03, copy of the minutes provided to each board member. Uh, the committee went into closed session to review and discuss individual student matters that would involve specific students and particular information contained in their scholastic records, including violations of the Code of Student Conduct pursuant to Virginia Code 2.23711A.2. The meeting reconvened from closed session. There was no discussion and uh, the meeting is, has been rescheduled to Tuesday, June 27, 2023 at 4.45 p.m. And um, I adjourned the meeting at 8.30 a.m. this morning. The only action coming out is that we approve the minutes from this morning's meeting from the, of the Student Conduct and Support Committee meeting held June 20, 23, and I do so move. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to approve the minutes from the Student Conduct um, and support committee meeting held earlier this morning. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. All right. Next is the amendment of, to the 2023 schedule of school board meetings. In our agenda packet, there are, um, are some recommendations for adjustments to the school board calendar. Um, and I'll give Dr. Hummer an opportunity to elaborate, but um, if we look at the previous dates, we've had those meetings a little bit later in the month to allow for staff to uh, gather appropriate details, information, and for us to have some committee meetings um, that would then lead to business of the board. Um, and so this recommendation is uh, for us to kind of follow that plan that we've, we've um, been working on earlier this year and adjust some calendar dates uh, to help with that. Dr. Hummer, anything to add? Uh, absolutely, that, no, that's, that's perfect, Mr. Monk. The only thing I would like to add is that for November, um, we had to move that to November 8th because November 7th is election day. And there was no way to move it at another date in the month because the following week is the VSBA conference and the following week is Thanksgiving. So that was the only date we could do there. And then for December, we have that winter holiday. So it's kind of hard to push that later in the month. But it did give us some more time by pushing that meeting to the 12th. So I just want to make sure I added those pieces. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hummer. Give board members a few minutes to review uh, any polls or calls for concern about the date changes. All right, with that, what is the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Motions have been properly seconded to approve the uh, amendment to the school board meetings calendar. Uh, any discussion? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and the calendar has been amended. Next item of similar vein is um, setting some dates for upcoming January 2024 to June 2024 meetings. Um, and staff has recommended a schedule that's before us here. Um, our Dr. Hummer and I have had some conversation around this, and our hope would be to get more on, of a calendar schedule that it coincides with our academic year. And so this would help us get closer to that um, and allow uh, potential new board members 
that would come on board in January to to be a part of that scheduling process. Any further context, Dr. Hummer? Or? No, you definitely spot on there, Mr. Monk. Thank you. Okay. Give board members an opportunity to review. Motion to approve as presented. All right, motion to approve. Second. Motion's been made properly seconded to approve the schedule of school board meetings from January 2024 to June 2024. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries and the schedule's been adopted. All right, number eight, appointment of superintendent's designees. Dr. Hummer, I'll give you a chance here to elaborate, but um, we, we have Mr. Goodwin on board now, and so we are um, would need to fulfill the, the proper paperwork to make sure that uh, he is authorized uh, to provide a signature and absence of the division superintendent. Motion to approve as presented. Second. All right, motion's been made properly seconded to approve as presented. That does include uh, Dr. Angelo, of course, as well. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next is the appointment of our Freedom of Information Act officers or FOIA officers, um, similar in um, vain. Um, Mr. Goodwin would serve as the FOIA officer and Dr. Angelo would move to the alternate FOIA officer. No, no is that what's on there? It's, so what, what's going to happen, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, if that's what's listed on there, okay. um, it is M Mr. Edwards will continue to be the FOIA officer until his last day. Uh, Mr. An Dr. Angela will be the backup as well as Mr. Goodwin will also be the backup as well. So it'll be in that order and I, I'm not seeing it there in front of you. Is that what it says there? Yeah, we need to adjust that. So th yeah. it's as I, as I presented, so we need to fix that. All right. So... Um, with that, and then in August, sorry, Mr. Chair, and then in August, hopefully we'll have a new communications person on board and then we'll have to go through this process again. Okay. So I'm hearing that, um, our current FOIA officer would remain until his last day. And then Mr. Goodwin would then take over immediately. And Dr. Angela would be the alternate. Is that the motion? Or? No, I'm sorry. The motion is, is that Mr. Edwards will take this lead on mm -hmm. and then Dr. Angela will be the the, the backup with Mr. Goodwin also being a backup as well. We have two backups to our FOIA officer. And then when we hire a new communications director, they will be the FOIA officer, and then it will go Dr. Angelo and then Mr. Goodwin. So the purpose of this is to add Mr. Goodwin on as another backup. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, the motion before us would be potentially, if, if someone were to move, well, I'll just go ahead and move that. I'll move that we um, have... Uh, uh, our current FOIA officer, Mr. Edwards, serves as the FOIA officer until his last day, and then we have alternates of Dr. Angelo and Mr. Goodwin uh, serve in that capacity, and then I do so move. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to appoint the FOIA officers and alternates uh, as described. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, and I will let Dr. Hummer share a little bit about a policy update summary sheet that is here. Dr. Hummer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as you can see before you, we have quite a few updates to our policies, and please keep in mind that these are all uh, attributed to the changes at the, the state level through the General Assembly. Um, I tried to summarize them the best that I could because there is a lot here and there is a document that hopefully you had a chance to take a look at that. Uh, we do have staff that are able to answer any questions. The th there are three that are bylaws that will have to go for a second reading and we made indication of that on here. The rest of them you all can approve this evening. Of course, if there are any questions that we're not able to answer this evening, we can then push it to the July meeting. Just keep in mind that regardless if you all approve these or not, these are all state law, state code, and they will go into effect. Um, so any additional questions that you have about each one, more than happy to answer them as we go through them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Hummer. All right, so as he mentioned, we do have three um, bylaws, uh, first readings. Uh, so first, we'll go started with first reading of policy 102P, bylaws, duties, and powers. Any questions for staff? 
All right, we'll move to policy 106P, bylaws, conflict of interest, and disclosure of economic interest. Questions for staff? Again, this is a first reading. All right, we'll move to policy 126P, bylaws, school board, in-service activities. Question for staff, first reading. All right, that takes us to uh, our next item on the agenda, which is policy 221P, Administration, School Crisis, Emergency Management, and Medical Emergency Response Plan. What is the pleasure of the board? Move to approve policy 221P. All right, motion's been made properly. Second. Second. Seconded to approve 2221P administration, um, school crisis, emergency management, and medical emergency response plan. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Move to policy 224P administration threat assessment teams. Motion to approve as presented. Motion's been made and properly seconded, or, or now it has been properly seconded. Apologies. Um, any discussion on 224P? I just wanted to confirm that the change in meetings, or change in the training is a requirement of state code. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Policy 227P, Administration, Emergency, First Aid, CPR, and AED Certified Personnel. Mr. Chairman, move uh, to accept Policy 227P uh, as presented. All right. Motion's been made. Second. And properly seconded to accept Policy 227P as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, policy 305P, instruction, the Virginia Assessment Program and graduation requirements. Motion to approve as presented. M motions are made. Second. And properly seconded to approve policy 305P, instruction as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Policy 310P, Instruction, Off-Site Instructional and Virtual Courses. Motion to approve as uh, presented. Second. Motion's been made properly seconded to approve Policy 310P, Instruction, Off-Site Instructional and Virtual Courses. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Policy 402P, 402P Students, Code of Student Conduct. Motion to approve as uh, presented. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to approve 402P, Students' Code of Student Conduct. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Policy 405P, Students' Compulsory Attendance, Exclusions, and Exemptions from School Attendance. Motion to approve as uh, presented. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lake. Are we in discussion? Absolutely. All right. I sent uh, Dr. Hummer a note today on this. Um, what caught my eye was a paragraph in Section 3 about alternative education programs and what we may or may not be required to do with a student who may or may not be in our school district. Can you explain, Dr. Hummer? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Um, so there are some situations in regards to custody of a student or if they're in the custody of DSS um, or if the student is McKinney-Vento or homeless, there are some situations that the student would either not be residing in Frederick County and residing somewhere else that we would be responsible for them. There's also situations of kinship. So for example, if a student is going through some sort of trauma or turmoil and they're living with say an aunt in Clark County, then that could potentially be a situation as, as well. Um, there, there's also some situations where the student might be living here, but they might be in the DSS custody of, I'm gonna use Clark County again. Um, so there's many different situations where this can fall under. Um, as, as my experience with student services and special education, um, you've never seen it all because every day is something different, um, but those are some of the scenarios and examples that we thought through. I had a conversation with our, our student support staff, um, uh, Mrs. Rittenauer, in regards to addressing that, and uh, we, we couldn't come up with any other examples there, but not saying there might be some others. So that was a great question, Mr. Lake. 
Mr. Lake. Does that assume that we knew the student prior in some regard? I mean, how would we know? Great, great question. So our Department of Social Services has to report whenever there is a student in our jurisdiction, and we also do the same thing. So we are responsible for those students. Whenever there is any sort of kinship situation, DSS is involved majority of the time, um, and they are the ones that report it, and they are the, they're the ones who report it to the school, and then our office here will get involved to make sure. It, it is very complicated, it is very complex, because there are many different contingencies in regards to where they reside, to where they live, to who they're staying with, to who the LEA is, and it is very, very complicated. Uh, but the Department of Social Services is required to let each of the respective school divisions know, and they do report to the schools in regards to enrollment, and then we get involved to make sure that it's being done correctly. And then, um, Ms. Renard, I don't know if you wanna add anything else there, if I, if I addressed all of that. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lake. <laughs> Sounds complicated. It's very complicated, yes. <laughs> Mr. Lake, thank you for that clarifying question. <laughs> um, Welcome to our world, Mr. Lake. <laughs> I, th I think I'll vote yes. <laughs> Understood, all right, further questions? On that policy, and again, it is required by state code, is that correct? Uh, yes, this one is, yes. Yep. All right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor of approving policy 405P, students' compulsory attendance, exclusions, and exemptions from school attendance, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, policy 437P, I believe is... Excuse me, Mr. Monk? We already approved this and... But who motioned and seconded 405P? Mr. Hester, motion, I carried the second. Thank you. All right, and... Am I correct in saying that policy 437P was approved during our- That's a great question. Um, during the instructional committee, that was a proposal to add in the administration of Narcan. This is actually a legislative change in regards to some language in that particular policy. So it's, we wanted to make sure that we separated that out to clarify that. Perfect. So this is a separate approval. Thank you. Motion to approve as presented. Oh. Second. All right, motion's been made and properly seconded to approve 437P. Uh, to include um, both recommended changes there. And Mr. Chairman. Mr. Atkins. So does that, well, if we go to accept this, does that include the revision that we made in uh, committee? Y yes, sir. So we were prepared, if you didn't approve the administration of Narcan, that we would have a separate policy without that in there that had this change in it. So that's okay. a great question. And so the motion, as I understood it, would be that it would include, um, and I don't know what's in our packet, but the motion that I understood it would be to approve the policy that would have both of those changes in it. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Is that correct? That correct. Because okay. you all approved it through the instructional committee. Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. And the, we've had a motion to that effect and a second to that effect to include both changes. All right. Um, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Policy 514P, Personnel Professional Development Programs. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion's been made properly seconded to approve policy 514P. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Comstock. This seems to be a lengthy addition. Can anyone shed a little bit of light onto it? And is this, uh, what's referenced here, are these new educational programs, new um, professional development programs that are gonna be needed? Is there funding to go along with that? Or what, what is this gonna entail? So this one entails a limitation on current training that is in place in, in regards to the evidence, or excuse me, is this, you're talking about 514P? 514P. So this is in regard, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the other one with the, the limitation of training. So this is involved the Literacy Act. So this, and, and please Dr. Angelo chime, chime in here, but these are pieces that are going into effect in the 24-25 school year from how we are presenting information to the public to what the requirement for training for our staff and we are trying to get ahead of this now and working with our principals and working with our teachers and, and Mr. Comstock, if, if I may, I totally understand the, the hesitation here because our plates are full for our teachers and we wanna make sure that we are abiding by the law but also keeping our staff. 
And that's one of the things that we are working very closely with, and that's why I think the state is giving us this time to implement these training. Um, so it's not that we will have to get this training in by August 1st, it will have to be in place for next year, and we'll have to make sure that teachers have the opportunity to get this training in, in order to address this literacy act. So that's what this entails. And then Dr. Angelo, if you wanna chime in some more, please. The only thing I would add is that we've already started this training with letters training and Orton Gillingham training in our, in our elementary schools has been voluntary to this point in anticipation that this was coming. So this isn't anything necessarily that we haven't already been doing. It just means that everybody is going to have to do it. It's, it's part of the Literacy Act, so we, ha we definitely have to do that. And, and I will say we're, we are seeing results from this. Um, one of our principals actually was studying um, the impact of this training on student performance and is seeing some positive results from the teachers that have participated in that with a targeted group of students that she identified. I mean, thank you for that. And I, I think that, you know, from the presentation on letters training, um, I really enjoyed that. And I think there's some really good components to that. And, um, but I think part of the power of that was that it was voluntary, right? And that we had people that were willingly doing it and then kind of spreading the joy of it. And so always with, uh, and I understand that this is required by the state, but I think it's all about in how we roll this out and how we communicate this and, and the time that we create for this, for our teachers to do this so that it doesn't feel like another burden placed on their backs. So just passing that along. If I can just add, to give you some, a little bit more context too, we do have a, um, a division literacy committee that we've had for a few years. And that committee includes reading specialists and school-based staff, as well as principals, obviously. And those are the types of conversations they're having. How do we do this? How do we enact this? How do we make this work for our students? Because, I mean, that's the whole point without, to Dr. Hummer's point, that was a, um, without uh, overwhelming our staff. So, so there is school-based staff input on this process. It's actually more school-based staff than it is anybody else. Thank you, sir. Mr. Comstock, members of the board, um, would the board be okay if we pass this by until our next meeting? Is, was there anything that would be harmful about that? Maybe have some additional conversations around it and, and the rollout? I think that if, if it's required by the state, I don't see why we you know, need to pass it over. I just, I think I would just want to emphasize with, this, with the staff that the, we do it in the right way. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may, um, and, and to your point, I totally agree with you. A and in regards to making sure that we roll this out in, in the right manner, and one of the things that Dr. Angelo and I talked about earlier today is this is going to be one of those running items on our instructional committees. Um, as I've mentioned to you all, there is going to be running items on each of our committees. Building and Grounds is going to talk about our, our improvements and in regards to our capital projects. And then for instruction, we're going to make sure that we are giving you all an update in regards to this um, because as and again, I, I totally understand the, the angst here because this is gonna be a lot more work for our teachers. But as Dr. Angelo said, it's gonna be how we present it to them and, and how we will prov provide it in a way that it looks like it's one more tool for them rather than one more thing that is on their plate. Um, I think that one of the things that we can all do a better job of from the state down to us is not necessarily saying you are required to do this, but this is how we're gonna get our students to where they need to go, and these are the tools that we are gonna get you there. Um, and I think that was the intention of this Literacy Act, which I totally agree with, but also agree with you all in regards to, we need to be careful with our staff but that we are putting a lot on their plate. So um, I applaud Dr. Angelo and his team. If we need to include, include more people on those committees, we can definitely do that. Um, but we are definitely planning on presenting this to you all on a monthly basis so you're all aware of where we're at with the progress. Very important. All right, what's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to approve as presented. Policy 514P, Personnel Professional Development Programs. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, policy 603P, Appendix Community 
Community Relations Appendix Request for Public Records. Dr. Hummer. Mr. Chair, if I may, this is, and I apologize, this is the only one that is not part of the legislation. This is just updates the FOIA piece. We do have a policy on this, and this does update. There's two parts, excuse me, there's two parts. There's the FOIA piece, and then there's also providing additional information on the charges. I apologize. So I want to make sure that you all were aware of that, that we made a change to the FOIA officer, but we also made the legislative change in there as well. All right. What's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve policy 603P, Appendix Community Relations, Appendix Request for Public Records. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Policy 616P, Community Relations, Commercial, Promotional, and Corporate Sponsorships and Partnerships. Motion to approve as presented. All right, motion has been made and properly seconded to approve. We public. haven't had the second. Oh, we haven't had a second. We want to second. Wait. All right, now we've got a second. A little slow on me down there. Sorry. Yeah, we had a good flow going on. Yeah. All right, any discussion uh, now that it has motion policy 616P has been uh, motion moved and seconded. Sure, I would like to bring forward to the table a potential motion to amend the policy for the division to require private boosters that utilize school-based names and, and or private financial support to schools or school-based programs to enter into this agreement, hereby acknowledging the policy through written agreement and specifically agreeing to the prohibitions included in this policy. All right, there's a motion. Is that a motion to amend? Second. All right, motion to amend. Mrs. White, would you like to share? Yeah, I think that some of our boosters um, could benefit from guidance and structure that this policy provides um, and provide our student, serve our students better. There's some things with some boosters in terms of fairness um, in some of the schools, and I think that this could provide a lot of structure and and help us cut down on that kind of thing. Yeah, I, um, so there's a, a motion to amend on the floor. I will share just as an individual board member, I don't exactly know what uh, your intent is of the motion and the context behind it. And um, it was rather lengthy. And so it'd be my recommendation that maybe we um, address this at another school board meeting, or if you're able to elaborate on some rationale behind it, or if there are specific causes for the need for the amendment. Um, having just heard it a few seconds ago, I'm not inclined to support the amendment at this point without a full understanding of its intent. But other board members may be. So. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lake. Uh, Ms. White, I think just a brief explanation of, uh, we, read, we read the policy, it's, it's quite lengthy. What's different uh, than what is written in the policy than what you just said? Because you said to, to adhere to the agreement uh, and, and the statements herein, what are you recommending different than what we read? Um, that our boosters, I think that our boosters do not enter into this partnership specifically, from what I understand. And so in doing so, they would be required to follow the guidelines of these, especially coming up to, let's see, um, there's not a number in here, but there's a couple bullet, bullet points that specifically page, page state, four. page four. five, statement that all partnerships and sponsorships will be consistent with all federal and state laws, ordinances, school board policies and regulations, all pre-existing school board contracts. Um, and then it goes on, dot, 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 about making sure that we're protecting our students um, from any kind of physical harm. And also I know of some situations with boosters that have been unfair in schools. And I think that that could provide us with guidelines and structure and be more fair. So, Mr. Atkins. So to uh, kind of piggyback on what Ms. Uh, White is talking about, uh, going into discussion with her uh, on this policy, um, it's been noted that some of our boosters uh, do not 
equally share the funds amongst um, all the teams that they represent. And this would provide um, an equitable outcome where we would provide equal funding, same as Title IX would do. So just so I understand correctly, this policy would direct separate nonprofit organizations on how to direct their nonprofit organization. Is so this, this kind of goes along with the policy where it talks about the partnerships. They are a partnership within our school division. Yeah. Could they not be? Mm. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lake. Last line on page four says that their agreement with the school will contain how the, how the uh, monies will be spent. Seems pretty clear, I think, from that regard. I think, um, I think if we can call it that um, Dr. Hummer, the principal owns this, right? That is correct. It's his. And so, because there are multiple boosters in our high schools, <clears throat> and I think asking the band boosters to go out and raise money and then say it's going to be distributed to three, four other clubs, that's, uh, that's not going to fly. <laughs> and so um, it just seems like with that statement that the principal supports that says how a plan is, how monies could be distributed, that kind of, that kind of answers it for me. So uh, I just, I'm aware too of some controversy that we've, you know, raised in the division with, you know, we've got some, we've got some aggressive boosters. They're out there doing it and uh, they're shaking the trees. So, um, I don't know, as long as the principal owns it, I'm good. I'm good. I trust our principals. Sure. So right now we have an amendment on the floor to uh, the proposed policy change. Um, just as an individual board member, uh, as I've shared before, n not necessarily for the content of the amendment, but just for the lack of um, uh, awareness or context of it before it was brought. I, I think this is too important of a subject to, uh, and the implications are broad reaching. As Mr. Lake said, this isn't just for athletic groups. There are many other booster, quote unquote, organizations that reach through a variety of, of student organizations throughout our system. And so I know I would uh, like to better understand the implications of the proposed amendment before moving forward. So with that, we've got a few options. Um, right now there's an amendment on the floor. We could vote on the amendment or we could uh, move to, to tape, move this to a committee potentially if there's a desire to um, rescind the amendment. Can I make? Mr. Hester, um, sure. So I, I do. Um, do want to ask Dr. Hummer, but Dr. Or, or Mr. Lake's comment sort of answered it in a roundabout way, the legality of us being able to do something like oversight. Do I agree that booster clubs do need some type, you know, if there's a way of um, putting together some um, guidelines and stuff for those boosters, you know, that's something we can look at. I am... Um, I do know that we have more booster clubs that are more aggressive and then, you know, the perception is that, you know, one team is favored than others. And, you know, I, I do see where you're coming from, Mrs. White. I'm just sort of wondering the, the, actually the legality of this because those booster clubs have their own tax ID numbers and they're, they are a separate entity. So is there a way for us to sort of go about doing this, but in a different way? And is that something that we can look at? Because Mrs. White, I'm in favor for, you know, looking at that. I just need to know we're covering our basis from a legality standpoint by dictating. And, you know, we had had some, you and I had had some discussion before meeting, and that's what brought this sort of question up is just the, the, the legality of it. And, um, you know, to Mr. Lake's point, it is to the school, the individual school that those booster clubs are aligned. Um, but is there a way to sort of, 
sort of take a look at this. It's I, I don't know if we're we'd be in a spot to look at it tonight, obviously, but just wanted to. If that makes sense, sorry. <laughs> Dr. Hummer, sure. If, if I may, Ms. Mr. Chair, um, I, I would make a strong recommendation that, um, well, let me back up. As a school board, you all can make any policy that you see fit, and I will enforce it. I, I will enforce that policy. Um, but if I may make a recommendation at the will of the board, I think for any policy that you all recommend, I would agree with, with Mr. Hester that it should go before council and we should take a deep dive into any sort of recommendation that we're looking at changing policy, having our staff take a look at it. Um, because as Mr. Hester said, and as Mr. Lake and, and Ms. White were, were alluding to, is they are, and, and Ms., Mr. Monk, you did as well, is they are a separate entity. Um, and, and we want to make sure that we abide by whatever, and, and they do, they are overseen by the IRS. I, I know that. And as Mr. Monk said, they have their own tax code. Um, but if there is a way to, to kind of provide some structure and supports for our principals, which I sound like that's the direction you all want to go in, then I would want us to take a look at this deeper and have council look at it as well as our staff to make sure that we're not putting something in place that's going to get us in trouble legally. Um, so that would be my recommendation for you all to consider and more than happy to move forward with looking into it further. All right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we refer this to committee. I'm not sure which committee is appropriate, maybe finance committee. So we do have an amendment. Mrs. Camry is shaking uh, her head. We could do that. Okay. Second. So we, we have an amendment on the table. I believe we need to uh, take care of the amendment first before we can. Or she could withdraw. Can right? she could. Okay. And we're recommending to move it to the Finance Committee for consideration. Would finance be the appropriate committee here or would it be if I can make a recommendation if you could just give it to me mm -hmm. and then I can make the determination of what committee it needs to go to I think right now initially we're thinking finance I think number one our council needs to take a look at it and then if, if, if it's okay with you all the will of the board if I can determine which committee it needs to go through and then regardless it'll go through that committee if you're okay with that so motion to refer this to Dr. Hummer to send to the appropriate committee for further investigation. Second. Yeah. <laughs> Motion's been made and properly seconded to refer to the appropriate committee. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Policy 620. Oh. So, Mrs. Pardon. She rescinded. She did rescind. Mr. Comstock. Yes, she rescinded it. Yes, sir. My apologies. Should we proceed with adopting the changes that are recommended currently on. Oh, that's a really good point, Mr. Comstock. It, I would make that recommendation that we do that, and then we push and Mrs. Push. White's mm -hmm. right recommendations back so to me. Motion great to approve point. policy 616P as presented, and then refer yeah. to, Doctor. Yes. Second. Apologies. All right, so the motion is, we've already referred it to committee, so the motion as I hear it is that it's six, approved 616P as presented. Any discussion? And there's a second on that. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Policy 620P, uh, Community Relations Strategic Planning. Motion to approve as uh, presented. Second. Motion is made properly seconded to approve as presented. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Comstock. Dr. Hummer, um, in this one, which seems to go along with policy 514P, that new um, literacy plan, um, would this require any extra resources? And do we have people identified to take care of these components that are required? Yes. Yep. Already on it. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor of approving 620P, community relations, say if I was saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Policy 709P, Operations and Finance Budget. Motion to approve as presented. Motion's been made and properly Second. seconded. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. All in, well, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Policy 720P, Operations <coughs> and Finance Motion. Purchasing. Motion, Motion to Mrs. approve White. as presented. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to appro approve policy 720P. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the portion of our meeting set aside for board member comments. Are there any? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lake. 
Uh, congratulations to all the uh, staff, the high schools. Um, three very successful graduations. Uh, we couldn't have ordered better weather. And um, 1,035 students crossed uh, to get their diplomas. So congratulations to them. 13 years of hard work. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> the month of May was, uh, I won't even attempt to recap, um, I think I had something on my phone for every single night, and there were nights when there was four and five events, high school, middle school, elementary school, plays, concerts, award ceremonies, some more award ceremonies. Um, it was just quite the quite the uh, the month. December and May is like that every year. Um, the the end of the first semester, if you will, and then the end of the school year. You just have all this stuff, everything. And if you wanna, if you wanna recharge your battery, that's where you do it. Uh, if all the stuff is stuff, uh, go see a bunch of uh, middle school kids play the trombone. That'll 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 set your world right. Um, the scholarship nights were amazing. Um, I talked to the naval officer that was at James Wood on their scholarship night. The Navy gave a $200,000 ROTC full ride to Ohio State to a kid. It was amazing. Plus all the others. I think uh, $2.9 million at, at uh, I'm not sure, Millbrook, uh, $2.6 uh, I think Shirando and James Wood was right around two, two million. So a lot of uh, good opportunities for our students to go continue their educations. Um, I'm also on the uh, community college board, and I saw so many uh, between the eight jurisdictions. I saw so many. I'll have the snapshot and I'll bring it to our next meeting of the number of students that graduated from community college before they graduated from high school. You want to talk about something that'll turn it around for you, that's it. So good kids doing great things. Um, it, it was a perfect month. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lake. I think what you're sharing is that we on this board are underachievers uh, comparative to our students in the system. Other comments from the board? Mr. Hester. Um, I'd like to uh, reiterate what Mr. Uh, Lake said. Um, you know, just the end of the school year brings just so many good things going on in our school system, and we have a lot of good things. And um, I was excited to see you have your first graduations as superintendent because, as we discussed, each one is just so uniquely different, and each one is so uniquely um, you know, impressive. And so it's always fun to, to see that stuff. And then we had a number of sports teams that went through, um, you know, very far in, in, into their seasons and into post seasons. And um, it's just, you know, very enjoyable because we have a lot of good stuff going on. I always enjoy um, getting up in the morning and reading the paper, whether that be uh, the sports section or things like that, and just seeing all the good stuff um, that we've got going on. Um, that leads me into another thing I'd like to talk about. When I made the decision to run for school board, I knew that it would be hard and difficult, but I knew that I'd be able to work towards providing the best education possible for our nearly 14,000 students, which more than outweighed anything. When I was elected, which was a true honor, I knew that everything I did personally and while working in my elected seat would be in the spotlight. We have so much good going on within Frederick County Public Schools. This can be seen on a daily basis in and outside of our classroom. If at any point my personal decisions took away from any aspect of the honored seat that I was elected to, I'd be the first one to step away. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, more important than the education of our children. They will be the ones that lead this county in the future, and they look to all of us, elected or not, parent or not, as their role models. If at any point any elected individual makes personal decisions that take away from the seat and body for which they serve and causes, causes a distraction, they need to step down. Personal actions are not just noise, as they have been referred to by others, and one needs to truly consider what is the best for the body they serve. Please know that I personally take my position very seriously, respect the seat for which I was elected, and honor the body for which I serve. 
for every elected individual needs to do the same. And if not, it's time to step down. Do what's best for yourself, the community, but more importantly for our school system. Resign, Atkins. Thank you. Other board member comments, are there any? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Atkins. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, at, you know extend my uh, congratulations to the graduates of 2023 from Sharando, James Wood, and Millbrook. Um, it's an honor to see them walk across that stage, grab their diploma, and move on with life, uh, whether they're going to college, the armed forces, the workforce, um, or wherever. Um, I also want to uh, congratulate the teachers, staff, uh, bus drivers, uh, maintenance uh, custodians, and nutrition staff who received awards tonight. And great job to the uh, girls team at Sharando uh, with their tennis. Um, it's great to see them get their recognition tonight as well. Um, I appreciate Dr. Hummer sharing his entry plan with us. Um, I look forward to seeing, uh, you know, exactly how that, all that's going to uh, take place and, and the great progress we have for years to come. Um, addressing um, the uh, allegations against me, um, hey, I, I, I take that very personally. Um, you know, all I got to say is, uh, you know, I'm going to do better um, working on that. Um, but to um, Mr. Hester's point, um, you haven't always looked after the community. Um, we've seen it. Um, you've also said that you don't uh, think that parents have a say in their child's education. And in the words of uh, Dave Chappelle, when um, heroes fall, cowards rejoice. All right, board member comments, are there any? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Comstock. Uh, backtracking a little bit to get back to the celebration of some of the good things happening. Um, that we have so many things to celebrate, so many good things happening with our students. And, and graduation was just such a, a wonderful uh, time. Great ceremonies and, and great way to celebrate our students and their achievements. Um, I want to just extend a, a thanks to our staff, our teachers, to to all of our people that that make every day happen for our students and um, hope you enjoy and get the well-deserved rest and summer that you deserve. Um, and then um, I had a couple other comments for, for the board. Um, I know there's some strong feelings on this board and from the public regarding the behavior of board members and board members' intentions and their conduct. We as a board owe our best to this community, to its citizens, to our teachers and staff, and most importantly to our children. We should be setting a good example and acting as role models in everything that we do. Certain behaviors displayed lately are in no way excusable, and they don't do that. They don't set a good example for our children. They also don't exhibit a commitment to the safety and well-being of this community and the children of this community. We owe this community and our children better. Each of us here has made a commitment to show up and to be here for the students and staff of this division, and I would like to remind each of us of that commitment. We committed to conduct, conduct ourselves professionally in a positive way to work together, even when we don't see eye to eye. That being said, I do feel it important to remind the public that no one on this board has the authority to oversee the rest of the board or to reprimand or remove other board members. Each board member is individually and duly elected by the citizens of his or her magisterial district, and those are the people that we each have to answer to. The constituents of Frederick County have the final say and authority to elect and to remove school board members. What we as board members do have is the ability to commit ourselves to showing up and doing the work that we're here to do. There's nothing more important, as Mr. Hester just said, than the education of our children. Please keep that as our focus, instead of allowing this board and community to be divided. None of us is perfect. We all have our faults. And I would challenge each of us to do some deep reflecting and make sure that all of our actions are worthy of having little ears and little eyes look up to. What kind of example do each of us want to set for the children of this community? Do we want to show them that recklessness and disregard for other safety is acceptable? Do we want to set the example that when someone makes a mistake, we should chastise them? While I don't condone the reckless behaviors displayed lately, I am of the mindset that we need to be showing each other in this community compassion, 
for that's what our children will see. They'll see our compassion and our commitment to their well-being. I'm committed to honoring this body and this community by continuing to make decisions that benefit this community's children, and I hope that each of you will stand alongside me in that effort and do some deep reflecting determine, to determine if that's something that you're each able and willing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Any further board member comments? All right, seeing, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Motion's second. been made properly seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned. Thank you.